Hey everybody, it's Mr. 100% Gamer here, bringing you a brand new Let's Play to kick off your April. And as you can already tell from the graphics, I'm going to be playing what has been called by critics the worst Wii game ever made. And that game is none other than Ninja Bread Man for the Nintendo Wii. For the Wii! Ninja Bread Man. Ah, oh, it's great to be back doing an LP, and uh, this is the third Wii LP I've ever done. So it's, it's it's like a Scottish LP, it's like a wee little LP. But yeah, um, Put One Snap was you know was an N64 game, so it's not really a a Wii game, but you know Jet Rocket was, and this is a Wii game as well. This is actually the first retail Wii game that I've played. This is a retail game. You buy this game. You will not want to buy this game. We are on the menu. Listen. Can you hear it? Can you hear it? Because I can't. You know why I can't? Because there's no audio track on the main page. You're opening to the game. Your first impression of the game. No music. Why? That I, I really don't know. This game will baffle you. And it will definitely baffle me. So, I guess we'll get into it. Just hit the first profile. There we go. Now we've finally, finally got some music. Anyway, there's not much we can do. We can check the credits, sub profiles. Training Dojo Master. So I guess we'll go into the options. It's the only thing we really can do, apart from play the game. We've got the how to play and the controls. They're basically the same thing. It's a tutorial kind of thing. They're kind of useless and we'll see them in the main game anyway, so it's not really much point looking at them. The sound, we can change the effects sound or the game sound. Eh, there's not a lot of options to choose from. This game really is very basic. I mean, this game was made by Data Design Interactive, and I'll get into them more later. Little note, look at the cursor. Look how much it's moving. Where do you think that curse? Where do you think that Wiimo is now? Just before when it was shaking, I'm just pick, I'm gonna put it down. Now, look at it. It's shaking. That Wiimo is on the table. <laughs> How can you play a game that responds like that? Well, anyways, let's get into it before it's too late and I decide to change my mind. So let's start. Let's play number ten, Ninja Bread Man for the Nintendo Wii. God, this is going to be interesting. Here we go. Let's play the game with the Ninja Bread Man. Level one, the Trinin Dojo. Only three more levels to go after this one. At least uh, I like I like the art in the game. The art was basically all done by one guy, Michael Rucker. He's basically the art team. There is an art team, but I don't know what they do. First thing we're going to learn is how to move and use the analog stick. But look how quickly he moves. How can you possibly control that when he moves that quickly? As you'll notice, there's these rotating jellies on all of these wafer doors. Yeah, everything's made out of candy. This place is actually called Candyland. And the story is that Candyland is Ninja Bread Man's home. And it's under attack from the snapping cupcakes. I'm not even kidding. And the first level basically revolves around us learning the techniques from the uh, Dojo Master who has Alzheimer's because he'll tell us exactly the same thing we've just learned literally about five seconds after you learn it. I'm just jumping up here. You'll see when you jump, sometimes you'll double jump when you only throw the, the nunchuck up. There's different ways to jump. I would not recommend the nunchuck because if you jump up with a nunchuck, you're going to do a double jump at some point. There you go, it's the same control. Except you're supposed to do it like twice, but sometimes it'll register the once jumping as a twice, so it's kind of annoying. The other control I'd recommend is Z, use the Z button. It's much, much easier. The fact that a lot of this game revolves around a lot of jumping, and I mean a lot of jumping, and the, the jumping mechanic they give you for the game doesn't work properly, it's not particularly great. We've just got in our first scroll, there are three in the first level, and then we can leave to go to the first proper level. So if you want to get the second one, we'll head into door two. There's no teleportation kind of thing, we just have to head all the way back. 
you can center the camera behind you by using the down button on the D-pad. You'll be able to see actually in the background, but there are actually bits of the level loading in as we walk towards them. That means this game is loading the levels as we walk through them. Why does it need to do that? Why does it need to be that close as well to have to load? You, you go on any half decent game, will those levels load while you're walking through them? I seriously doubt they will. This game is just badly made. Anyways, uh, don't want to get too much in the hit right now. Now we're going to learn how to use his magical Master Sword. Yeah, it's like Zelda. It works exactly the same. Uh, just try and slash at them. The thing is, the sword is basically completely unresponsive. I mean, I I'm swinging a lot here, and it's hardly doing anything. You can't actually take any damage from these guys. Um, they're supposed to be like mocks of the, the snapping cupcakes we'll see later. There are, I think it's four different enemies in the game. And I'll get more into them when they sh actually show up. But for now, we've just got these mock cupcakes. Now they're done, we've got our second skill. You'll notice there's actually a... I should really not talk this fast. Reason being that this game is quite repetitive. And that'll, that'll, you'll see that later on. So I really shouldn't be talking quite so quickly. Because I'm going to run out of things to say really quickly. But you'll see there's a score at the top of the screen. And that score will really mean a lot to you at the moment. And it won't mean a lot to you throughout your entire gameplay. The score doesn't do anything. It does sort of do something later on. Through the main game, it doesn't do anything. So you get you get points for killing enemies and you get points for getting the scrolls or getting the collectibles, because the collectible changes after this level. Anyways, the only half decent thing about this game is the Shuriken Stars, I think that's what they're called. The Ninja Stars basically, but the official concept art calls them Shuriken Stars, I'll show you. I'll put all the concept art in the sidebars. Um, but yeah, they lock on, which is actually good for this game. But the fact you're actually having to say that the game locks on is just a shame. Oh, look at that. Awesome. His face doesn't change, though. His face is always the same. There we go. We've got the final scroll. We've actually finished the level now. But yeah, that... The bad thing is... Now we've actually used the stars, the ninja stars, the shuriken stars, whatever you want to call them. They're just projectiles, basically. Um, but you'll find that projectiles actually have two components which don't actually affect each other. They have a horizontal and vertical component. And check that out in physics, but uh, yeah. It's the end of the first level, by the way. But yeah, that, they actually mess up the camera, and I'll show you that later on. They really mess up the camera. 